Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Imperator Rome as we are playing as the Roman Republic. So before we get started, I would like to mention one thing that I forgot to mention last episode, and that is that if you plan on buying this game or any of the expansions, including the new expansion Heirs of Alexander, then if you use the link that you'll find in the description of this video, that is an affiliate link. So our channel will get a commission uh, for any money you spend in the store, and it doesn't necessarily have to be for this game. If you were to uh, buy another game or another expansion for one of those games, uh, then we would get a, a small commission. And it's just one way to help the channel uh, by doing something you're going to do anyways. So something we definitely appreciate. And again, that is in the Paradox store, but it gives you a code that you can use on Steam, so you can you know you you know get the game on Steam or the expansions for your Steam edition. All right, so let's go ahead and continue with our war against the uh, against the Samnites. However, I would like to to note one thing that I didn't want to cover too much in the the last episode because we were already doing a lot of you know tutorial explanations here. Uh, I did want to explain what's going on with this new system here uh, for those of you who you know aren't familiar with how things have been changed or this is the first time you've seen Imperial Raider Rome. Uh, so they they've split up the armies. So there's two types of armies if you don't count mercs, of course. Levies and legions. So legions are like the the regular standing armies that you'll find in most Paradox games. So they do operate a little bit differently, and we'll check that out once we get access to legions. Now levies are the one that most countries in the game, uh, particularly the Republic, uh, the Republic countries, will start out and and will only have the use of of this levy system. And which units you have available to you are based on the culture of all the integrated pops in this particular area. So it's only for integrated pops. So any pops that we have uh, that are cultures that are not integrated, then we do not uh, get any units from them. And then the composition of these units, not counting like the supply trains, you know, that is based off of, uh, again, off the culture of those pops. And when we raise those up, uh, we do lose the bonuses that we're getting from the pops that are associated uh, with these units. So you can see here that we're losing a bit of base income, some uh, base tax, manpower, and research points. All that is being lost as long as we have these levies raised up. Also, if you have the units completely destroyed, then you could have some of the pops that are tied to them will be killed as well, so you'll lose pops. Uh, so that's the new levy system. Uh, we'll talk about it more as we play, but uh, one important thing to note is that it's the governor uh, that controls the army, and thus their marshal rating is uh, the one you'll use. So that's the reason why we didn't assign any any uh, uh, leaders. All right, so let's go ahead and actually start playing. Uh, the first thing I want to do is something that we didn't really need to do. We didn't need to increase the fleet maintenance because we're not using our fleet. Uh, we're not sieging any locations where we'll actually need to uh, you know, bring our fleet out. So, you know, to, to blockade. So there's really no reason to, to pay for them. And we could save a lot of money. All right, so I think we have this army here going to take that fort. Uh, this army here was chasing down these guys. Could go ahead and attack them. Uh, and you know what? I think we will. I don't think there's any reason to wait. We outnumber them. Their morale is, of course, garbage. And so you can see here, we'll easily get a victory. We will, of course, have to fight in the hills. So we will get that penalty. It should be an easy battle just because their morale is so low. All right, excellent. So we did win. Uh, we lost 536 men. They lost 50, almost 5,200 men. And I think we just wiped their army out. Yes. So I, I believe that means that the enemy has no troops left. Uh, so it's just finishing up these sieges here, and then we'll be done with the conflict, and we'll try and get as much as we can from them. Uh, so we've got an event here, Troubling Developments. Recently, we've seen that our sensor, as well as those under his charge, have been doing a disappointing job. It seems people having issues with them keep reporting back to us how difficult they are to work with. When talking to the man, he claims it is simply a matter of bureaucracy being difficult and that the funds for his office has been lacking lately. He makes sure to mention repeatedly that it would most likely work out if only they were given more funds to work with. So we can say the corrupt trader will not be given anything, in which case he will lose loyalty. Or we can say, here, silver are, silver, are you happy now, Quintus? And we'll lose 11.44 gold and he'll become more corrupt. Uh, but he will become more loyal as well. All right, so, and, and I think this will result in our our character, which we haven't really looked at our character here, uh, but we're playing as Publius Fabius Sophus. Uh, so this is our current, you know, the main console. We do have a, a co-console, uh, but we're, we're playing as this character here. And we are jealous, victorious, 
and wise. So those are the, the benefits we're getting from our character's traits here. Uh, it, as far as the way our government works uh, here as Rome, you know, we have the two consuls. And I believe what happens here is that whichever stat is highest is the one that is used. So like whether Marshall were equal, so it's, it's using ours with the finesse, we are much, much higher using ours. The charisma, slightly higher using ours and that as well. And then with the zeal, we're also higher. So because our character is, is much better uh, than our co-consul, we're using all of our stats. But it's one of the uh, benefits of it. But of course, it does have some negatives as well as what we'll probably see as the, the series continues. Uh, so, so yeah, we would gain corruption ourselves, and you know what? I don't know who this character, oh yes, he's censor. So one thing to consider uh, with your government and the offices is that the amount of political influence you're getting is based very heavily off of the loyalty of all your officials here. So the higher the loyalty, the more political influence you get from them. So by reducing his loyalty by so much, it will reduce our political influence by quite a bit. Uh, not only that, he might be the leader of one of our families. He is not. He is not the leader. Uh, so he's right there. So he's not the leader of the family, but still, it's something to consider. Uh, but you know what? I'm, I, I really feel like this is sounds like corruption right here. So we are not going to comply, and we'll just have to take a little hit to our, our political influence. All right, uh, so we could speed this up since we're just waiting on sieges. Oh, and probably would help to, to unpause the game as well. Uh, so let's go and have these guys take this province here, and then we'll probably just move them back into our own territory because there's really nothing for them to do. Uh, the balance of power, there sure are a lot of events for Rome, uh, a lot more than there were for, for Macedonia when I was playing as them. Our heralds bring troubling news from the proud nation of Carthage. After a brief period of instability, a toothless governmental faction seized power in the Carthaginian... Adarim, uh, making a mockery of the proud democratic heritage of their nation. Our advisors recommend that we dispatch an envoy to issue a sharp rebuke at this troubling state of affairs. Uh, those wizened mi misers, misers, that's the, the word I'm looking for, uh, seated in a gilded throne, take it into their mind to placate their people with misguided conquests, upsetting the delicate balance of power in our region. So we can send an envoy, and then it'll decrease the opinion uh, of Carthage and we will get more popularity, our, uh, our console would. Or we can say, let us tread lightly about this particular line. All right, well, we're not really trying to start trouble with them. Uh, the popularity would be helpful, but I would prefer to stay friendly with Carthage, uh, at least until we deal with the situation, the situation in Italy. So let's tread lightly about this particular line. There's no effects to that, so yeah, we'll go with that. So let's go ahead and move our armies. I forgot we had two armies here. Uh, let's go ahead and move them back to our territory. And we're just waiting on these two sieges now. And I think that's it. I suppose, actually, you know what? We could be knocking out these territories, though they will all go to us if there's no other forts here. So, you know, that's probably just best to, to go back home. Uh, once this uh, siege is done, then all these provinces will come under our control. And uh, then we'll just be waiting on that siege. And then we should have a very high war score. And so yeah, all these will flip to us. And so we can go ahead and start leaving. And just wait, you see one's changing right there. Now I think it might do it one province at a time. Let me make sure they're all part, oh, okay, they're not all part of the same area. Okay, so this one would probably flip for us, uh, but the rest of them wouldn't, so we do need to go back here, because that only applies, Okay, that's the reason why it doesn't uh, matter there, because this is a impassable train. So we'd have to go take these two then. Because, yeah, it only applies to this state. Now, you can see that one's already flipping because they took control of the uh, the capital there. This one, for whatever reason, is not flipping. That's strange. Does it have a fort here? It doesn't have a fort. Oh, and they actually just raised up another army there. All right, so that's a problem, uh, because we do not have enough troops over here to defeat them. Uh, so what we want to do is have them attack our fort in the hills there. And we probably don't need all these troops, so let's just select this guy here. And when they attack us in the hills, then that would result in uh, us getting the bonus. But you can see that they're no longer, oh, uh, they're actually going to come over and attack us. Let's see if we can get away. I probably should have fled here. Might get a quick defeat here because uh, we are vastly outnumbered. I'm just seeing if there's any way we can get away in time. Uh, so they will get here on the 11th of June. That's the 13th. Yeah, it might be the 13th. That's the 12th. 
That's the closest. All right, we'll go ahead and move that way. But we're clearly not going to get out of here in time. But they might go to hold them off until the rest of the army gets here. One advantage, of course, is that we will be defending in good terrain here. We could also just end the war now, guys, which is, I think, what we'll do. We're at 99 on the war score. No reason to take the loss there. And uh, let's just sue for peace. Uh, I don't want to lose the manpower. Uh, so let's see what we can get. Uh, we should be able to get control of quite a bit. So we're going to go ahead and take control of all of this region here, as long as they agree so far we can get control of all that yeah i think we're going to take control of both of those two countries that that opposed us in the war uh there's really nothing else uh to be done here and we had plenty of points so we could have probably ended this war much much sooner uh than we did uh but one advantage of all the battles that we did is i'll show you guys here in a second let's go ahead and do this this peace treaty and this will increase our rank to regional power just one conflict there uh, so whenever you annex a country, then you have to decide what you're going to do with their elite. So their families, uh, all the family members here. And what's really nice, because this was not the case uh, in, in previous versions of the game. I don't know when exactly this was added. I don't, I don't think this was part of this patch, but it, it wasn't in the game when we played it last. Is that you can now look at the actual people that you would... Uh, you know that you'd be bringing into your country if you so desired so you can see what their stats are and see if these are, are people that you want to bring into your country you know based on uh, their traits and their skills so like this guy's got pretty high charisma and yeah, some of these guys are, are quite skilled yeah some of them aren't too bad at all uh, we got a lot of people here <laughs> so yeah we could bring them into the country and you know they would be minor characters that we could make use of. So looking through here, it looks like the Samnites are much better. We have a, a, a 10 charisma here, a couple of level nine guys as well. Uh, when we get into the Lucanian, I'm probably mispronouncing that. Uh, but when you go into them, you can see that they're they're just not as good. This guy's got that nine marshal, uh, but and I suppose there's this character. He's pretty darn good. Yeah, he's actually not not too bad at all. Uh, but the rest of them, well, I might have spoke too soon. There are actually, there's a couple decent characters. Uh, but overall, it does seem that the, the Samnites are slightly better. Uh, of course, they would have very, very low loyalty to us uh, because their home country is in ruins. Uh, here's the options. So we can say our enemies deserve no quarter, in which case we will kill all the characters that we got from that country, and we'll gain a bit of popularity. And you'll see that our popularity is much higher than it used to be. That's because we just won this complex. So that played a big role in that. So our popularity is already very high, so we don't really need more popularity. Uh, but if you do this, uh, you'll notice that the culture happiness in all those provinces, uh, those pops, are, are not going to be happy because we massacre, massacred their nobility. You could do banish those of class and put the rest to the sword. Uh, so important characters will be banished to foreign lands instead of executed or incarcerated. We'll lose some aggressive expansion, which we have a lot of, guys. Uh, so it would be wise to maybe do that once. And you don't have as big of a happiness penalty here. We just get 5%. Where we can imprison their leaders, let the rest disappear. We'll still get that 5%. And we'll actually lose some popularity. Uh, and then I think that's it that's going to happen here. Important characters will be imprisoned, obviously, rather than banished or killed. Or you say pass judgment on the important families, in which you can deal with each of the families and determine which one you want. So I think what we're going to do is with these guys here, uh, we'll probably just go ahead and get that reduction of aggressive expansion. I know they had the one good character, but I feel like the Samnites are a little bit better. And then we'll want to pass judgment on the important families here and see which ones we might want to keep. Now, since we do lose popularity which with each of the families that we accept, we're probably not gonna want to accept them all, maybe just one. And in that case, we should probably go with the, the best one here, uh, the best family. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah, okay. So it looks like we have, it does say that we get three from each of these. But I'm not seeing three characters uh, over here. Yeah, I'm not seeing which, which three characters these are. Uh, but obviously, this is the uh, Pontius guy. And he is okay. Uh, he's got that, that high marshal. Let's see if we got any uh, better characters here. Uh, so this is... Okay, so I think that this is also that family right here. So 
that's that middle option. And he's pretty garbage too, so probably don't want uh, to go with him. Uh, looking at the top family here, let's see what they got. Now you do have the level nine charisma and another level nine marshal. And then we have th this family here at the bottom, uh, which I think this is probably the better of the two families. Yeah, I think we're gonna go for this family here. Yeah, let's go ahead and give refuge to them. And then with the rest of them, we'll have them crucified and we'll gain back some of the popularity that we just lost. And just accept a few family members, just in case we need them. All right, so they have been destroyed and Rome has just gotten a lot larger and a lot more powerful. Uh, we increased our pops by almost 50%, pretty close to that. So now we can go and disband our armies. I really wish that uh, Imperator would get a button like in CK3 where you can just disband it, all your armies with a button when you're not in conflict. Instead, we do have to do it through here. So we're gonna disband all our levies and what's important here is that the experience that your levies have, which you know, we can select any of these armies here and take a look exactly what their experience is. These guys didn't fight much, so they're gonna have pretty low experience. Uh, you can see here, this uh, army is about 12% experience. Yeah, 12% experience for all of the units. And this one might also be around that same level, 11% here for these guys. And so the, the current experience that they have when you disband them is gonna result in you getting military experience for that, uh, which is right up here. And you guys will see a little bit later what we're gonna use that for. Uh, so this is exactly how much we're getting. 5.27 here, 0.83 here, 0.71 here. 1.05 here. So a lot of uh, military experience there. Almost doubled what we have there. We do have some starving pops, so apparently food might be a problem here. And I think that's just because the armies are raised up. Uh, these guys did not disband because they're currently moving. So we're gonna have to do that one time, one more time. All right, excellent. So I think everybody should be disbanded now. And thus, we don't really need to pay for our army anymore though. You can see it doesn't have a cost here because we don't have any troops raised up. So that's not something we have to worry about, but if we didn't have a legion, then we'd want to reduce that uh, so we weren't paying for the army that we're not using. Uh, so more offers for trade for wine. All right, so of course we know where these guys are at. I don't know if we'll want to trade. Whoops. Uh, we're gonna decline them. I kind of feel like we should trade with no, actually, maybe we shouldn't trade with him. <laughs> yeah, you know, we won't trade with him. Uh, let's trade with Argos. There we go. And we do have another trade route here. Excellent. So let's go ahead and see what we need to get here. So I think we had talked about getting horses before. We were working on getting two fish, which we do have. So we're getting the National Freeman happiness of plus 8%. So I think we're going to go and trade for wood, guys. So we already have one, and... If we trade for another one, then that'll give us the ship recruit speed plus 25% across our empire, and also it increases the local manpower by 2% for each one of the, the resources we have. Now, there's nobody willing to trade with us. However, we can trade for the wood in, in one of our other uh, provinces here. So let's go ahead and do that and get it into the capital so that we will have that, that benefit of the sh ship recruit speed. Plus, I don't think we're getting any manpower or pops from this area because there's no Romans over there. We might want to reevaluate our uh, our cultural policies, something to consider. And there's actually something else I want to go ahead and take care of as well. And man, we're actually losing money right now. I don't know if that needs to update. No, we're, we are in fact losing money at the moment. Uh, probably all the fortifications we just took. So we're gonna need to reevaluate that. Uh, rising from obscurity. So I think this is, uh, you guys can read this here. I believe that this is just a, a minor family becoming a major family because we are now a, a higher rank. So we're gonna have four families. Uh, and we get to pick which family we want to bring in. And so each one of these family members are approved by a certain party. So this is the Popularis candidate. This is the Optimates candidate. And this is the Boney candidate. So we might want to consider that and you know how our relations are with all of them uh, we already have a pretty high opinion with two of them the bony don't really uh, like us that much but they're also the weakest of the parties and so it doesn't doesn't matter as much as they don't like us really we want to keep the automates happy uh, because they're they're uh, the most uh, powerful of the parties and they are pretty happy so i don't think that really matters i i think uh 
if we're going to go with any of these three options, it should be the best, uh, the best candidate. And then we also have the choice to select a self-made man, but that would result in losing loyalty with several characters. But he will get the trait first generation Mer meritocrat, uh, which is going to increase finesse, uh, monthly popularis conviction, and monthly democratic conviction. Okay, uh, so that'd be an option. I suppose he'd be slightly better. Uh, but I think we should really just base this off of their stats. This is Lucius here, and he's actually pretty good. And he's got charisma, he's got really everything. Uh, so that'd be a good choice. So these all might be good choices, though. Uh, maybe not. Uh, Publius is not, uh, so we're not going to pick him. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, this candidate's not that great either. So yeah, I don't think we want to go with either of these here candidates. Uh, really, we should either pick the self-made man, uh, and then of course we get all those penalties, the, the loyalty penalties. So probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, I don't think we'll do that. So I think that this, this guy is the, the best pick, and it wouldn't hurt to improve opinion with the the Popularis faction. So yeah, I think we're going to pick him. All right, so uh, a couple things need to be done now that we have a new family. You'll see that they are scorned uh, because they don't have any seats in our uh, our government. They have no positions. And so let's go and take a look at the, the family because, yes, uh, we no longer need uh, as many uh, offices for each family because there's more families. Uh, so you'll see here uh, with this family we actually have double the number so because of that they are in fact grateful which will increase the loyalty of all the family members uh, for all three of these families actually so essentially the decii the green family here are the one that we need to get an office for could just create another fleet and, and give it to them that way uh, but we'll take a look and at all of our our offices and see if we want to reevaluate who's in these positions because frankly uh, many of these positions don't need to be filled by the people who's in them because you know we have them quite grateful as it is so we probably want better candidates in these positions now party approval uh this a semi uh important uh, position we can always keep that guy here though uh, what we do want to do is make sure that the the leaders of the family all have positions uh, this one here, very important since we're going to be getting a lot of aggressive expansion. We already have a good guy there, though. Same here. We got somebody good here and here. Uh, there might be slightly better candidates. Uh, nope. Looks like there's nobody here. Let's see if there's anybody here. There's a, a better candidate right here. It's a level 10 guy, but yeah, he's not. We could just put him there, I suppose. Uh, he's not very loyal, uh, so we'll get a little boost in his loyalty. And his statesmanship is not all that high. Uh, but I don't know if this character's statementship is that much uh, higher either. Let's take a look and see what other positions you might want to change. So this is the Omen Power. Again, it's not uh, super important, uh, but we do have a Scorn family here, and that would be the best candidate, so we might want to put him in place there. Looking at the Pontifex Maximus, head of our religion here. He's already pretty good, so we don't need to replace him. The Tribune of the Plebs. Uh, pretty good again, not really any better choices here. And uh, here there are some better choices to help increase the health of, of all of our characters. So we might want to replace him. We could also replace him here though, and I think that would probably be a better pick because that's the, the family we need to, to get out of being scorned. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you can see already uh, the Omen power is going to be significantly higher now. All right, excellent. So all of our families are now happy. and In fact, some of them are quite grateful. Uh, we are looking at a possible civil war here in 21 months. Uh, and I, I'm not entirely sure if it's just this candidate here, this guy here that's, that's causing it. He is governor, so he's pretty important. So that would explain why it's a big deal that his loyalty is so low. So we might want to appease him. And there's a couple ways to do that. We could bribe him, of course. That does result in some corruption. Uh, but it's a possibility. And we do use the money of our consul so we'd be using his money he has 420 wealth so we're not using the funds in the state treasury uh, so that would be one option let's just go go back to him we could also grant him a holding now that does cost money uh, from the treasury 40 that improve his, uh, his loyalty a little bit would irritate the popularis family while appeasing the optimates but yeah we could do that That'd be an option. He's already pretty powerful, though, and that would only increase his power. Uh, yeah, that could be an issue uh, for us. That power base, 81. We give him free hands. That's one we typically don't want to do unless we want his corruption to go up really high. 
Yeah, we might just do this one. It would cost a little bit of political influence, uh, but it would boost his opinion by uh, a bit, 15 loyalty. Uh, so yeah, that's what we'll do. I think that's the best option out of all these. The making friends, you'll, you'll see that later in the series. I'm sure we'll use it at some point. Uh, essentially, when, when you do that, and we actually need to take care of something. Uh, but essentially when you do that, uh, you have to try and uh, do certain things. You have a bunch of events that will pop up and you'll be able to choose whether or not you want to do them and then like how how much you want to do for them. And it could be like giving him money, but it could be a lot more like giving him a certain position in, in the government that he wants or uh, giving him a holding. There's a lot of different things you can do. Some of them cost political influence, uh, but you gotta like, you gotta spend a lot on that person to, to befriend him. And even then sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, so what I wanted to do here is start working on annexing some of our subjects. So remember we have currently four subjects. Now in order to annex them, we have to get their opinion up to 190. Uh, as you can see here, start integration, need 190 opinion. So these guys really don't like us. So we'd have to work on them for a while. I think everybody doesn't like us anymore. It used to be a lot higher, uh, but now it's it's been decreased quite a bit. And it seems like it's the same everywhere. Uh, these guys are slightly higher, so we could annex them a little bit easier. Uh, but I think we're gonna go for these guys first just because they're more powerful, so it'd be more useful. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Let's go and improve relations. It's gonna cost us 25 gold to do this. It'll get up by 100, so that's not gonna be enough, guys. We will have to increase it even further in order to uh, actually be able to, to annex them. Now we can get a gift here. That would get it up by 25. So even that would not be enough. Yeah, even if we did both of these, that wouldn't be enough. So that's kind of a problem. Now there is our diplomatic stance uh, that we could change and that would help. As you can see here, uh, we are currently getting a negative 10, a negative 20 actually, uh, with all opinion in our neighbors. And I think that does apply even to them. Yeah, so that'd be one way to, to improve it. And I suppose that would, that would work. It would cost a little bit of political influence. I don't know how often you can change it. Uh, but yeah, it might be better to, to, to change this so that we can start annexing some of these countries. And I think that's what we're going to do, guys. While we have a, a little short period of peace while we rebuild our, our manpower, I think that's the best way to do this. Uh, so the, the different options are uh, neutral stance plus one diplomatic relations, appeasing stance, and this actually helps us reduce our aggressive expansion. Uh, so that'd be helpful. Improved relations cost is cheaper too. And allies would have an increased opinion. And yeah, we'd actually get a plus 10 with everybody. So that'd be a, a really good choice uh, for us. This one here would increase our income and it would give us an opinion boost as well. Yeah, I think we might want to do that one though. Uh, this is the one we're already on. And then we have this one here where we can integrate faster. Uh, and we get loyalty of subject states plus 10 and plus 20 for our subject. Actually, this one might be be better for what I'm trying to do here. Yeah, I think that's actually the best one. And we'll just slowly kind of burn down the aggressive expansion. It'll take a while to annex all these guys anyways. So yeah, that's what we're going to work on. Uh, we'll do that. And then that should result in opinion being much higher. Plus 75. Uh, so now improving opinion still won't get it up high enough. We eventually have to, to give a gift. Uh, but let's go and start working on improving opinion here. Spend a little bit of money on that. And we also can spend some political influence as well. I think if we wanted to improve our capital, there's a lot of things that you can use political influence for. And if we were to improve our capital, we'd we'll probably go with another local trade route. Population capacity isn't quite maxed out yet. Oh yes, that's right, our money is an issue. Uh, so we need to fix that. Uh, so let's go ahead and deal with the fortifications because we did just take a bunch of fortifications and they are costing us. We have three right here. Of course we have that one there. Uh, that one there, and then this one here. So a little bit too expensive. Um, this fortification is fine. They can't enter in through here. Uh, this one covers a lot of territory, so I'm okay with that one as well. Though in that case, we don't really need this one here. Though this one does cover Neapolis. Yeah, I really don't feel like this is uh, the best location for this one, uh, since we're if we're gonna keep this one. Uh, we're probably way over the, yeah, way over the, the max fort infrastructure. So yeah, we get it, gotta get rid of a lot of these. Uh, we can also take a look and see how high these fort levels are. Uh, they're all level one, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so yeah, let's go and get rid of this one. That'll help reduce the cost a bit there. 
uh, over here we're gonna keep this one uh, and then we have the the three up along here and then that's completely unnecessary in fact we probably don't need any of these I think we're just gonna get rid of all of them that will help reduce cost quite a bit that's what's costing us so much money is all these damn fortifications so you can see this area here well this this one fort here does care uh, cover quite a bit so I think that's good and then we'll keep that fort down there in the south as well and, and I, I think that's got us in a very good situation financially so it looks like our console had a son okay so we are told that the baby is named we can't always change his name uh, but his current name is Appius and remember he's gonna have the same middle name as his father Fabius and the same last name as well it's only the first name that's gonna be different from his father and that's what he'll be called as a child until, of course, he becomes an adult in which he'll take the same name as his dad. And if his dad was still alive, then his father would be called the Elder and he would be called the Younger. Uh, so he's the son of the Consul of Rome and he is a member of the Fabii family. We're going to actually name him Lucius. That was one of the names we were looking at to name our son when we were, you know, looking for baby names. Always liked that name, Lucius. All right, uh, so... We're going at speed four here, and we do have money uh, to spend. It's burning a hole in my pocket, man. So uh, let's go ahead and actually build something in Rome. Uh, see what we want to get next. I think we had talked about, we actually did get a library. Uh, we could go and get another one. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, make sure we step up that research really high. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Uh, I think that the food capacity is fine. Although I have noticed that food is not going up very quick here right now. But you know, let's go and get a library. Research is pretty important. Uh, so charitable contributions. Our officials in the province of Campania report that they have been approached by some of the petty landowners of the area with donations of grain and other fare for the use of the state. Whether they are unable to sell it themselves or just model citizens, extra grain is always useful, though it, though it has not yet been satisfactorily decided how the windfall should be deployed. So we can say, let, let the state granaries of Campania keep it, and they'll gain loyalty, uh, or well, they won't gain loyalty, but the governor will gain loyalty here. And his loyalty is not as high as we would like, so that would be helpful. And it would result in them getting 200 food and just see where they're currently at on their food. Meh, they could use it, I suppose. Or we say, uh, we'll give it to the, one of their neighbor provinces right here. And they need it even more, I suppose. And that would likely irritate... Yeah, that would irritate... Uh, the province, but not Marcus. Marcus would be fine with that. We say the poor like bread, don't they? And in that case, Publius here will get more popularity, which looks like his popularity has ticked back down. Uh, and Marcus would lose loyalty, and Rome would get tyranny, and would also piss off the province. We probably don't want to do that one. You say it is a gift for the Roman people. Marcus would lose loyalty. We'd get some money, and the province would also lose loyalty. So I don't think we should do either one of those options. We want to gain loyalty with Marcus. And so I don't really see any reason not to just do this one. Let the, the state granaries keep it. I think that's, that's probably for the best. Now, you'll notice that uh, our Great Wonder is here. You might be wondering what all we can do with it. Well, the longer it exists, it will gain prestige. And as it gets prestige, it gets higher tiers here, which will increase the effects. Uh, so there's really not much to do about that. It's just about how, how old the Wonder is. Uh, so we just kind of wait on that, and it'll get, it'll get better. Uh, so there's there's really nothing to be done there. We might want to increase the size of our fleet. Our fleet leaves a lot to be desired, guys. So you know what? Let's go ahead and do that, actually. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the Macro Builder, because I haven't shown this yet. Uh, macro Builder is a feature that I think was in EU4 first, and a great addition. Allows you to you know see all the possible places you might want to build things and see what benefits they give you uh, right from up here. You know We've just been building through Rome because I know I want to build in Rome until we max out their, their building slots. Yeah, you could do buildings here, settlement buildings, and then of course we can build the ships. I uh, used to build build units, but with a new unit system, you don't need to do that anymore. And you can also just take a look at resources and import, and, and uh, it's just one way to, to look at if you want to do a particular resource. It's one way to do it uh, rather than using that other system. And in some ways, this is better, and in other ways, the other one's better. This one actually shows you if there's any uh, available when you click on it, so you know it's helpful. So that's one way to do it too. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and build, we're gonna build these ships here, the Tyremes, because 
uh, they are better against this ship. Uh, this ship has some benefits. It has higher maneuver, uh, which means it can attack from further away, and also it's faster. So, you know, it's, it's helpful to have. Uh, and you want to have some of those in the units, particularly for the flanks of your, your line, which the ships do attack in lines here in this game. And so having them on the, the flanks is very helpful, so they can fire from far away, attack from farther away, I should say. Uh, but these ones are much better. As you can see, that they they do take slightly more morale damage, uh, but look at that, plus 15% against those ships. So yeah, this is the one that we're going to want to go to build. And I suppose we'll build here. Um, I don't know that we want to... This is one way to build, by the way. I should show the other way. So that's one way to build. The other way to build, if you don't really care where you're building and you just want to make sure that the the you know ships uh, go straight to the unit as soon as they're done, you can build through here. So this works as well. And we already have one building. So how many we might, want, we might we want to build? We might want to look at our, our potential enemies and see how they look on the fleet so that we can control the seas. Obviously Carthage is going to dominate. We're not going to be able to contend with them. But some of our other uh, neighbors, we do want more ships than them. So maybe just kind of peek around here and see what everybody else is rocking. Yeah, I mean, none of these guys are going to have anything. So they're probably going to be our main rival here. We don't have to worry about the Diadochi anytime soon. So we want to have more ships than them. So we're going to look for 15. That's what we're going to try and do. Get 15 ships here. And we'll just build through here. Build the Navy. I think we have two building right now. So let's go and build three more. All right. So that should be enough. Might be one short. But we'll we'll wait and see. Uh, so we got another event here. Scandalous. Dominus, uh, while the occasionally rakish and laush tendencies of Marcus are well known throughout the upper circles of Roma, no one was quite prepared for the appalling slew of allegations leveled at him of late. There are growing rumors of terrible indecencies perpetrated on slaves at the debauched gatherings honoring Bacchus, uh, Bacchus, however you want to pronounce that, where Marcus and his lewd entourage exhibit and debase their latest acquisitions from the Emporia of Vei. I think that's how you pronounce that. Uh, Marcus denies everything in the most stringent terms, claiming the tells to be lies engineered by his political opponents. The gossip is backed by several witnesses who claim to have been besmirched by Marcus personally. Slaves and virtuous citizens across Latium are demanding government-sanctioned justice to deter these excesses, and we can no longer ignore the situation. All right, so this is this is Marcus here. He's not a very corrupt man, not very good at statementsmanship. He's pretty loyal. He's got a little bit of money here. Uh, I'm interested to see his traits. He doesn't have any traits. Okay. So we can say, we will conduct a full and fair investigation into this matter. Uh, he's going to lose loyalty. He does not have a position in our government right now. As far as his stats go, yeah, that's probably why he's not that high in any of the stats. And he'll get the modifier under investigation. And every member of his family is going to lose loyalty. This is that new family that we just introduced into our government, or, you know, just became a major family. And we'll get 10 political influence and lose a little bit of money. We say a token inquiry should be f sufficient. He will gain loyalty and he will slowly lose uh, popularity because he's under investigation. Or we can say, honestly, why waste our time on this? In which case, we'll lose corruption. We'll get more loyalty with him and the slaves will be unhappy. I feel like we should probably just do, do this one here. Yeah, I mean, this is going to tick his loyalty down. But the most important thing is that his whole family is going to lose loyalty if we do that one. So we'll just do this one. That makes most sense for us. Rebellious tendencies. Seems the people of Marcia feel robbed after becoming a client state under a rule, and they are looking for opportunities to get out of the alliance. Though they are recent allies, they have played an important role in our armies already. Maybe it is time to make some concessions to calm them down. So we can say some guests will placate them. And they'll send some gifts to them. You know, it costs money and political influence. They'll gain the money and, and increase the opinion with us. And of course, this is these guys right here. So yeah, we could do that one. Uh, we could give back some land that was once theirs. They'll receive land. Yeah, so we'll give them some provinces. All right, so we're not going to do that. Or we can ignore them. Let's do the gifts, and then we're gonna we're gonna make use of that immediately uh, by improving opinion a bit more. And we're gonna try and see if we can't annex them. Might as well. 
Uh, we don't have to get his opinion as high as these guys. So we're at 85 there in their opinion. And with them, we're at 117 right now. And here we have a update on trial developments against Marcus. While the investigations into Marcus was mainly intended as a symbolic gesture to ease tensions, it is clear after some preliminary groundwork by jurists that the accused is essentially guilty beyond all doubt. It is a minor miracle that this did not come to light sooner. The unspeakable going-ons at the Dacia's villa scarcely bear thinking about. It is, however, very hard to ignore just how much how much situations like these lend themselves to those less scrupulous and willing to earn the debt and gratitude of their colleagues in need. So he's saying, we will just have to see what happens. Publius would become more popular. Marcus would lose popularity and, and the family's going to lose prestige. But he's saying, clearly this is all some sort of smear campaign, which we're trying to, to appease Marcus here. And we're going to get a little bit of loyalty there. Uh, but... It does seem all the other effects are, are essentially the same. Uh, they do lose less prestige, though, the family. Or we say anything can be fixed for price. And so this is going to result in us getting some corruption here. I think we'll just see what happens. I don't really have nothing for this family. I mean, we've already, in the questionable character here, I'm not entirely sure what about our, our character is questionable. We're not corrupt. And yet we don't have any traits, so I don't know why... This one's available here. It just says because of our questionable character. Yeah, we're not going to do that one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do this one here, guys. Uh, I don't got nothing for the family. They just became a major family. just rose them up. And already we're having problems with them. So you'll notice here, and, and we might have had these before and I might have missed it. Uh, this is a section of acute events. So these are the events. They're called minor events in the code. That Paradox doesn't want to stop the game for. They don't want to pause the game for them. And if you don't do anything with them, then they have a default option that they automatically select. So I do try and interact with them, uh, but they're not big events with lots of text or anything like that. Uh, so uh, never has a more devout, uh, devout man existed than Septimus Decius. Our people clamor at the very door of the temple, demanding that we declare a feast in his honor. So he's, he's our augur. How should we answer them? So we can say he is but a modest man, and this event has occurred due to having an advisor with high statementship. Or we say glory to Septimus, cost a bit of money, but we will gain stability, and we're going to plus 5% religious tech investment. Uh, yeah, this is very much worth 18 gold, and we want to get that stability up, because there's a few things I want to do that cost stability, and uh, we can't do it until we, we get that a bit higher. I suppose we could do it now. You notice that we're losing stability. That's because stability has... A, uh, a middle ground, which is, is 50. And if you're above 50 or lower than 50 and you don't have any modifiers that are increasing it enough, you're gonna s slowly drift towards 50. And so we're actually losing stability. And so it might be wise to go ahead and do those actions that I've been wanting to do with the stability now. Uh, so there, there's a couple things. Uh, one of them is to change up our gods uh, that we're currently using because I think there, there are a few better options perhaps than what we have here. Um, there might be. We want to take a look. I haven't actually looked yet. And then the other thing that we might want to use stability for is changing up our laws. So laws do require political influence, and then you also lose stability, you know, because you're, you're changing the laws. So that makes sense. So you do lose a little bit of stability whenever you change the laws up. Uh, before we start doing that, because there's a lot to, to dig into there, I, I do want to make a make sure that we don't want to change our gods up. So I really like having Mars here. Um, makes sense, and, and plus we can't change it anyway because his omen is currently active. But I like Mars. I like the morale of armies. I like the discipline there. And remember, Mars is you know Ares, the equivalent to Ares. If you're more familiar with the, the Greek gods, which I think most people are probably more familiar with the Greek god names, and they're essentially equivalent to the Roman gods, since uh, you know that's why in the game they call it all the Hellenic religion here because. They were basically taken from uh, from Greece, and so very, very similar. So Mercury is our current Hellenic deity of the economy. He's equivalent to Hermes. Uh, we have two different options here, which he's given us national citizen output. That's not bad, honestly. That's a, a decent one. Uh, there's Pluto. He's equivalent to Hades. And we get a negative 5% bill cost here. The uh, omen would be a, a plus 10% national tax which might actually be better here because we earn a lot more money from commerce. Uh, so even this, though this is slightly higher, uh, technically Pluto would have a better omen. Uh, the build cost though, 
I, that would probably save some money here, but I do like that citizen output, so we might not change that. Uh, the other choice then would be the other choice would be Vulcan, uh, which is equivalent to Hephaestes, uh, the you know the god of the forge. And this is legion maintenance reduction, absolutely useless for us since we don't have legions. Fort maintenance would be helpful, but that's only if we enact the omen. So I think we're going to keep Mercury here. Let's take a look at our other options. Obviously, we're not going to change Jupiter. I'll let you guys see the other options, but uh, we will be keeping Jupiter since we have control of his temple. Uh, here's the the holy sites and. That's actually going to be relevant because we definitely want to change up our fertility god. Uh, this is Demeter, by the way, in, in Greek gods, uh, because we have control of Diana's, uh, her um, temple here. And this is what benefits we're getting there. But we cannot make any adjustments to the temple with the treasures in there. You'll see right down there it says you may only place treasures in the altars of deities that are part of your pantheon. So we cannot make adjustments to Diana, unfortunately. So we're going to change over to Diana. Here's the benefits that Diana gives. A global monthly food modifier plus 10%, and then the omen is integrated culture happiness. So probably not the, the best uh, uh, benefits here, uh, but uh, again, we want access to the, the treasure. So for that reason, we're gonna change up to Diana, which is Artemis in the Greek pantheon. Uh, the, other, the other options, as you can see here, we have Venus, which is Aphrodite, uh, Bacchus, which is Dionysus. And those are the, the benefits that we're all getting here. But yeah, we're, we're definitely gonna go with Diana. I think that's the, the clear choice uh, to, uh, to pick here so that we can go ahead and, and place uh, some of the treasures we have. So as far as which treasures we wanna do, I definitely think local manpower would be helpful. Uh, I wonder if we got that from this war here. Uh, we might have. Uh, other options that we might want to do is probably the integrated culture happiness. Yeah, uh, those are the two we're gonna get. So let's go ahead and in place, deposit both of these into here. And beautiful, nice. So we took care of that. And of course that did result in us losing a bit of stability because we changed our, our gods up. Uh, so we'll now start ticking back up towards 50 and uh, then we'll be able to use it, use it again a little bit later. Uh, scandal draws to a close. So the investigation is finally ended. Uh, so the investigation and the accusations against Marcus can finally be brought to a close and has established his innocence in the matter to the satisfaction of the court. Uh, surprising. Uh, so the many concerned parties and witnesses have largely been dismissed as disruptive uh, slanderers seeking to undermine the reputation of an important member of, of society for their own nefarious aims. While there may be some small backlash over the seriousness, seriousness with which the trial was conducted, we have at least staved off a major crisis among the slaves while protecting our own interest. All right, so I guess it worked out. Uh, it is gonna decrease the popularity of uh, both Marcus and our, our character, and he is gonna gain loyalty though, because he wasn't convicted, of course. Uh, the family's still gonna lose prestige, and we're gonna get a little bit of gold. Uh, it does look like the slaves are still gonna be unhappy, so I don't know why it said we, we staved off. I guess it would've been worse if we had handled it differently. Uh, we got an event about Saturnalia. This isn't a, a, a uh, holiday celebration uh, that happened in December. Uh, it is essentially the equivalent of our Christmas. A lot of the uh, a lot of the traditions of Christmas, not all of them, but some of them were actually taken from Saturnalia, uh, like the giving of gifts uh, comes from, from Saturnalia. Uh, but he has a, a Roman holiday that happened in uh, December. God, I'm sitting here trying to remember the exact date, and I do not remember. I, I think it was like a week or so before, uh, you know, our Christmas, uh, December 25th. I want to say like the 15th, maybe the 17th. It was an odd number. Uh, some of you guys are going to look it up and, and let me know. But it was somewhere around there uh, is when uh, it was celebrated. It was celebrated at the, the Temple of Saturn. Uh, Saturn is equivalent to the... Titan, the Greek Titan Kronos. Yeah, it was a, kind of known for, for the giving of gifts. There's a, there's a lot to the to the overall tradition. Uh, it's pretty interesting uh, holiday overall, uh, especially when it comes to like the uh, the relations between slaves and and master and their owners and how things are kind of uh, different on during that holiday. It, it's an interesting holiday, so you should check it out. Uh, we don't really have time to to talk about it in depth here, um, but. Most importantly, this grand festival has given us integrated culture happiness of plus 5%, so all of our people are a little bit happier. Uh, so we're going to get into May here, and then we're going to end the episode.
All right, so uh, a lot of stuff next episode that we could uh, do with our our money. Uh, we don't got a lot of money, and I think we still have one thing left to build here. So that's what we'll we'll want to do next uh, is build something here in Rome, get us up to the the building cap uh, population capacity is starting to get up up to the top there. So we can always use. Uh, some of that political influence to to make an adjustment here and increase population capacity that'd be an option we are going to focus very much on rome uh, for our buildings and, and as well as for for these here though you'll notice that it is now more expensive uh, when we look over here it's just the 80 uh, political influence when we go over here we're adding 20 gold on top of that uh, the more you do of the uh, province uh, province investments the more of those you do, the more expensive it gets. So we won't be able to always do it here, uh, but for now we will continue to invest in Latium and in the city of Rome. Uh, so that is unfortunately gonna have to be the end of today's episode. We are, we're getting that fleet built up. We got a lot of stuff done, changed a few things, finish up that conflict. Um, obviously I'm, uh, we're here in a time period that I absolutely love. So. A lot of time probably going to be spent talking about, uh, you know, whether it's mythology or history or whatever it is, I'm probably going to spend a lot of time talking about it because uh, I really enjoy uh, this period. It's it's my second favorite period in history. Used to be my, my first favorite uh, uh, period in history until uh, I went to college uh, to get my degree and my history degree focused on early modern European history. And while I, I did enjoy that period, and what actually made me really start to enjoy that period was EU3. Uh, I was a big fan of EU3, and uh, I, I wanted to learn more about it, about the period, because you know I wasn't extremely familiar with it. My uh, area of, of uh, interest was very much antiquity, uh, so and, and World War II as well, but to a little bit of a, a lesser extent. And so when I got my degree, I really wanted to learn more about the EU period. And so that I'm not going to say it was the only thing that that uh, impacted my decision, but it certainly played a role. Uh, you know, I was also just interested in the time period because it's uh, early modern, so it's a very, very interesting time period where a lot of things happened where Europe went through some uh, some great changes. Uh, it was definitely transitioning uh, from, you know, the Middle Ages uh, into the modern period. So I, I very much wanted to learn it for other reasons, but I'm not going to say that EU didn't have any influence because it absolutely did. Uh, EU3 had some influence on that decision. And so... I started learning about early modern European history in college. You know, that was the, the focus of my, my history degree, the BA I got in history. I also have a BA in political science that I got a little bit after that. And um, yeah, the, the early modern European history was, was the focus of that. So therefore, I would say that's that's probably my, my favorite time period now after you spend four years learning about a time period in, in a university setting. Uh, you just learned so much about it, and it just became a, a very much a, my, my top interest when it comes to historical time periods. And antiquity has taken you know back seat to that a little bit, but this is is certainly uh, one of my favorite historical time periods. So you're going to see a lot a lot of that, uh, a lot of the the historical discussions kind of added throughout it. Um, and, and, and you know that's probably a better format than having the big long uh, lectures all the time as well. So if you guys watch the the EU uh, four campaigns I've done, it's it's similar to that. I, I spent a lot of time talking about the history. So I hope you guys do enjoy it. If I'm going overboard, let me know. If you want a little bit less of of that kind of talk and a little bit more gameplay, then let me know down in the comments below. Uh, but we are getting some stuff done. Uh, we we made it. A, few, a little bit longer than we did in the last one. We do need to speed this up a little bit, though, because we're not going to make any progress uh, at this at this pace. Uh, but yeah, I think another part that's that's causing us to move slower is, of course, the uh, the tutorial sections. Me trying to you know help you guys uh, you know, learn the mechanics of the game, which we could tick down fort maintenance. I didn't realize we didn't do that, so we should tick down fort maintenance. So there's no reason to pay for forts while we're not at war. Uh, so yeah, we'll tick down fort maintenance, and that'll earn us a bit more money too. Yeah, we're going to go up to Fort Point 92 right now. And I think we're done with the fort situation for now. Yeah, I think this is probably probably fine. And we're not going to... We don't have to worry about anybody attacking us anyway. We're going to be the ones doing the attacking. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. Uh, next episode, we might have some more... Uh, I'm trying to burn off some of this aggressive expansion just a little bit before we go to war. And we're also focusing on annexing some of these countries here. Uh, so we're kind of working on, on doing that as well. Uh, we're getting the manpower built back up too. And so that's another reason why we're going to stay at peace for a little while. Uh, burn off aggressive expansion, build up the manpower, 
and work on that before we do our next conflict, which will likely be them here. Yeah, I think they'll they'll be the best targets. I don't know if they have any alliances, uh, but if they do, then it would allow us to, they're kind of far away, and I think one of us is about to be conquered. Uh, so I think that's still the best pick, though. Just kind of look at other uh, potential options here. These guys are all pretty small. Uh, so how about these guys here? Uh, could attack them as well. That'd be an option. Uh, but yeah, I think we will expand up this way. And I think that's that's uh, the best way to go. And then these guys, we won't be able to attack them until, I want to say it was 58, if I'm not mistaken. i just double check on that. Uh, so yes, 458. So that's when we'll be able to attack Atreria, which of course is the, the main rival we have in Italy. Certainly the most, most powerful rival here. Uh, so yeah, we'll attack them pretty much probably as soon as we can. Yeah, I think that'd probably be the best way to, to go and, and get rid of them before they get any more powerful conquering their neighbors. So yeah, that'll be the end of today's episode. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next episode, and thanks for watching.